Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Monday, September 20th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Archives, top of the page, archives of eye candy right below what you're looking at right now. You can get us on your mobile phone, you can get Dave Murray's weather forecast down in the corner, the audio on iTunes, and we roll on with our 15-month paid vacation. The weather guys, by the way, did a swell job over the weekend, huh? Nobody predicted any rain, and what happens? Oh, only about ten and a half hours of nonstop lightning, thunder, and heavy rain. Rain, inch and a quarter of rain, nice job. And then the forecast for Sunday, Sunday with a high of 90. Yesterday's high, 75. Missed it by 15 degrees. Change the battery in your Doppler. Thanks to everybody who came out to watch us play ball at Washington, Missouri on Saturday evening. We had a great time out there. Those people in Washington are so appreciative of us coming out there, raising a little money from the United Way out there. And it's the Sharks, that's my team, against the Buds, the team out there in Washington. You know, three years ago when I joined this team, I told the coach, I said, look, I can only pitch, that's all I can do. I'm an automatic out. I couldn't even hit as a kid. But then I got tired of being an automatic out, so I started taking hitting instruction from my buddy Tony out at Hitter's Choice Cages in Eureka. And I've been hitting the batting cage a lot. And guess what? Every once in a while now, I'll tag one. So Jack Clark shows up to sort of lend his support to the effort in Washington on Saturday evening, and he coached his third base for us. And I rip one down the third base line about a foot and a half foul, and then I take a pitch, and the next one I slap a base hit into left field on a curveball. Jack Clark comes to me in the dugout. Jack Clark comes to me in the dugout after the inning and says, that was a fine piece of hit in there. I got a bunch of guys, and I said, wait, come over here. Say that again. I want witnesses. Anyhow, thanks to everybody out in Washington, and thanks to Jack. We had a great time. Some of you think you go a little hard on the tea party, and now Christine O'Donnell says she was a witch once out there in Delaware, and now she wants to be the senator. You think I'm making this up? I'm not, and I'll prove it in just a minute. And I don't know. It's sort of fitting, I think, someone who once cast a spell, leading a group of people that can't spell. Lindsay Lowen's going back to jail. TMZ says she failed her drug test, and it was cocaine. And it's starting not to be funny anymore. You know, and she's supposed to do this movie about Linda Lovelace. And if you need me to tell you who Linda Lovelace is, you have really stumbled upon the wrong website. But the movie is called Inferno, and they're supposed to start shooting it this fall. And the producers have said, no, no, we're going to wait for her to get her life together, come back out of prison. She's going to be great. She's a terrific actress. We're behind her all the way. This morning, they're like, ah, Jesus. We're going to probably have to find somebody else. Meanwhile, Paris Hilton gets off with a year of probation. Maybe Lindsay should get Paris Hilton's lawyer? Maybe? Last year, the Octomom was offered a million dollars by the people at Vivid Entertainment. And if you need me to tell you who Vivid Entertainment is, you've also stumbled upon the wrong website. Uh, anyhow, well, you know, at the time, she was like, hey, I'm getting a reality show. I'm a star. I'm a... Well, here it is like six months later and, or a year later, whatever. And Vivid has come to her again because they said, hey, you know, we heard that you owe $450,000. If you don't pay it on October 9th, you're going to be homeless. you got 14 kids. You owe thousands of dollars. You're about to go on welfare, and the media deals have dried up. What do you say, Nadia? And the rumor going around is that she is thinking about it. They said you just do one scene, one hour's work, and, and you get the half million dollars. It's down to a half million. And uh, she might do it. Now, the question is, do you want to see the Octomom in a porn? And my answer is, yeah, as long as she doesn't talk. I almost said keep her mouth shut, but we wouldn't want that, would we? Terry Jones, that preacher down in Florida, was going to build, uh, uh, burn all those Korans. Uh, the police department down there just sent him a bill for $200,000. He said, yeah, we worked a lot of overtime, and you're paying for it. The head astronomer. For well, the Pope says, if aliens ever show up on Earth, the Vatican says the Catholic Church will baptize them, but only if they ask. Most fascinating part of the story for me is the Pope has a head astronomer. Newport, Maine, police officer driving down the street, car swerving in front of him, pulls the car over. It's a woman. What are you, drunk? No, I'm pumping breast milk. You know, there is... Multitasking, and then there's multitasking. Season premiere of The Apprentice, 4.7 million people. That will get you taken off television. That's nothing. That's even bad for cable. 1990 movie, Goodfellas, Martin Scorsese, 
wonderful roles by Ray Liotta and Lorraine Bronco. They were just terrific in the movie. And now Scorsese says that the original choices were Tom Cruise and Madonna. I think they made the right choices, huh? If you wait around long enough, bad things will happen to people who have perpetrated high crimes against humanity. I am speaking of Ricky Lake. Okay, she was good as Tracy Turnblatt, I'll give you that. But, you know, she did that awful, terrible, painful show with all those forlorn people and all those racial couples. It's like, I get it, there's racially mixed couples in New York. You don't have to beat me over the head with it. The terrible talk show. So she's out in Malibu renting a house and is refilling a portable heater and burns the house to the ground. And the owners say, hey, we heard that you were getting your cars out of the garage and getting all your possessions out of the house instead of trying to put out the fire. And they're probably going to sue her now. I love stories with happy endings. Well, let's talk about the Rams, wearing my Rams hat. You know why? Because I'm proud of the boys. They are improving greatly. You know, if that big, fat defensive lineman isn't stripped of that ball running for a touchdown after the fumble recovery last week, and if this other big, fat dope doesn't take that stupid personal foul late in the game yesterday, pushing the quarterback over, the Rams are probably 2-0. and And that's what I've told you. It's not about the record this year. It's about, is the team improving? And by the way, that Raiders quarterback who beat us yesterday was cut from the Rams right before the start of the season in 2008. He's got to feel as good as Ryan Ludwig today, who comes in and hits the game-winning home run on semi-national TV on Saturday afternoon. Did anybody else laugh at that Mandy Murphy promo that ran <clears throat> during the football game? I'm going to have my exclusive interview with the boony hat bandit. And she folds her arms like, I'm a badass. I laughed. This new version of the TV show Hawaii Five-0 had better be the best TV show in the history of the medium because they have pumped this for everything. All Promos all over the football games. Entertainment Tonight. Just promos and commercials and just, you know, out the ass. And we already know it's not going to be the best show of all time. And it sort of reminds me of this TV show, SOS, back in the early 1990s. CBS ran promos during the Major League Baseball playoffs just out the wazoo to the point where you're like, all right, start the show already. You need me to watch it? Okay, I'll watch. And it got some of the worst ratings in television history and was just panned universally by the critics. And the show was canceled after one airing. But the story is better than that. Because in the Western time zone, there was some sort of a game being broadcast. So the CBS primetime schedule was preempted that night. So SOS, South of Sunset, with Aries Spears, who was unknown at the time, went on to do Mad TV, and Glenn Fry from the Eagles, who never did any acting that I'm aware of outside of Jerry Maguire, and he might have been in an episode of Miami Vice, and of course, he acted his way through the last couple of years of the Eagles. Yeah? Yeah. But uh, they promoted the crap out of it. The show was canceled. So it has the distinction of being the only show in history that I'm aware of that was ever canceled after one airing and that never even aired in the Western time zone. Hawaii Five-0, are you next? Huh? Are you? I'm marching around the kitchen yesterday, a half an hour after hearing that Burger King for breakfast. Da -da 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 -da. Now, I would never eat at Burger King for breakfast. I don't eat breakfast. But I would never eat there for breakfast anyhow. But, but I'm like ready to go out and buy Burger King food. It's a tremendous commercial. And the key, by the way, to eat at Burger King is order the kids' menu. Because then you don't get all your calories for the entire week with one hamburger. Get the Junior Whopper. And I did, by the way, coming back from Washington, Missouri on Saturday night. The Super Bowl halftime show almost, uh, uh, I mean, it caused such a firestorm in the broadcasting industry because the wardrobe malfunction, bullshit, it was planned right down to the nipple shield. And Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson... I, I could punch them both in the nose for how much trouble they caused us in the broadcast industry. Because, you know, she has her boob exposed on television, and the FCC comes down on radio. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It's like, it's like having a country attack us and then declaring war against the wrong country. Not like that would ever happen. Huh? So anyhow, after all that, they went basically classic rock for a couple of years with McCartney and the Stones and... There are people who think Prince is classic, right? Tom Petty, Springsteen, The Who. 
The Super Bowl this year is on February 6th, next year technically. Put your money on the Black Eyed Peas for the halftime entertainment. Yeah, Ryan Franklin comes in the other night. Hadn't been in a game for a couple of days, so Tony says, hey, it's like 13-3 to 3 or whatever it was. You know, just go in there and just pitch it in and just give you some work, stay sharp. And the first thing he does is give up a home run to center field, deepest part of the ballpark. You know, if you don't have a closer who's throwing like 95-96, or uh, if that closer doesn't have some sort of a specialty pitch like a split finger like Suter had, or like Lee Smith or Tom Henke, then you don't have a closer. Guess what? I don't think we have a closer. And Jason LaRue, who was injured in that brawl in Cincinnati between the Reds and the Cardinals, kicked in the head by Johnny Cueto. First they said, yeah, i got to put him on the DL. Then they're like, well, he's got a concussion. We're going to have to shut him down for the rest of the year. Well, now we get word that he's going to have to retire. Listen to this. Headaches, nausea. He can't drive. He can't even ride in a car. He can't cook for himself, and he can't watch TV. They've sent him back to his family in Texas, Jason LaRue, forced into retirement. He deserved better than that, and it just makes the whole annoying thud that this season is given off of the Cardinals even worse. He was, a, he was a great backup to Yadier Molina, and he deserved better than that. And one of the Cub rookies, Tyler Colvin, is standing on third base yesterday in a Cub game, and Wellington Castillo is batting, and is using one of those maple bats, and the bat snaps and punctures Tyler Colvin's chest. He's standing on third base, punctures his chest. I'm telling you, these maple bats, how long have I been telling you about this? Two years? They're going to kill somebody? And it's probably going to be a fan. And then maybe Larry Bud Selig, the commissioner of baseball, will say, oh, you know, maybe those maple bats aren't so good. Somebody's got to get killed before they realize that these things are dangerous. All right, two uh, very unpleasant notes here. There's a guy by the name of Joe Davis who worked for us. He was our Beatles expert and did a weekend Beatles show on KSD back in the 80s, I guess early 90s too. Uh, Joe has a heart attack and drops dead at the age of 46 last Thursday. Our thoughts go out to his friends and his family. Edwin Newman, three decades with NBC News, wrote the book, Strictly Speaking, that really came down on the news industry about how sloppy things had gotten in terms of grammar and just professionalism. Great book. He was a great guest on our radio show. And by the way, he did an episode of Saturday Night Live, and he told me in an interview that he got more response from that one-time 90-minute shot on Saturday Night Live than he got from 30 years of being in the news business. Edmund Newman passed away. He was well into his 80s. He might have been in his 90s. Edmund Newman, great guy. We need more guys like that, by the way. All right, birthdays today. Our buddy from the Post-Dispatch, the food critic and restaurant writer, and Joe Bonwich having a birthday today. JC's Eye Candy, we've got the episode of Politically Incorrect from 1999. Bill Maher sitting there and Christine O'Donnell, the senatorial candidate from Delaware, um, talking about when she was a witch. Okay, Not edited, not made up. It's there. Read it and weep, tea partiers. All right, JC's Video Village, we've got new stuff for you this week. St. Louis Radio Association back in 2001 gave me the Lifetime Achievement Award. And, you know, before they give you the award, they drop a video screen and they run like a eight-minute video tribute. And all your friends and family say really nice things about you, like you're dead or something like that. You get the U-Man, Lance Hildebrand from Y98, DeMarco Farr, Jamie, Close, McKenna, Eric Mink. So you're going to see that. Wayback Machine goes back to 1991, live at 5 at the Old Barn for a pivotal Blues playoff game with the Chicago Blackhawks, Mike Bush and Trey Wingo doing a live shot from the Old Barn, Mike Keenan returning to town. The old school photo today is a 1990 picture of me with Tracy Lords right after she went legit, after she got busted for those uh, illegal porn movies that she did, and she was doing a movie with Johnny Depp called Cry Baby. And we have that photo shoot, and she looks good. All right, tomorrow is Celebrity Tuesday. We'll cook something up for you. In the meantime, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Monday, September 20th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>